Today we tell a story about a database with an always an encrypted column and we want to use data migration service to migrate that. Can we do it? And if we can't do it, what other ways can we get that data to Azure SQL DB? On today's Tales from the Field. Hey my friends, welcome to Tales from the Field. If this is your first time finding us, hit that like and give us a subscribe. Here on Tales from the Field, we drop content on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. On Tuesdays, we have this thing we like to call the Roundtable, where we share blogs, posts, videos, put together by you, the MVPs of the Azure Data community, for the Azure Data community. And on Mondays and Wednesdays, we put together this thing we call MS Tech Bits. You're watching one of those now. Let's get over to it. Recently, I was talking with an individual about a database that had column level encryption enabled. How can we tell if our database has column level encryption enabled? The first thing we need to do is connect to our server. Here I'm connected to my Azure SQL VM, and I'm gonna look at the Stack Overflow 2010 AE database. And you can see when I run this query, it shows us that my table name users within this database has a column about me that has deterministic encryption enabled. So I wanted to see if I could do it through DMS because in the past I wasn't able to. And here on the screen, you can see I'm still getting an error, but we're not gonna work through the whole Azure Data Studio SQL migration to move to Azure SQL DB. We have a video to show that earlier on in the series on the channel here. I recommend going check that out. Now you can see on the screen here, I had a lot of tables that successfully migrated to my Azure SQL DB, but I have this one column that failed. So if we go ahead and click on the failed event here, and yep, sure enough, if I bring this up here, it's gonna be that same error that says that we have a sync issue with an invalid column type from BCP client, essentially telling me that I can't use data migration service to move this column. And you can see on the screen from our FAQs that it, it is not in supported. So how can we get that data there? Well, there's a couple of ways we can talk about that today. The first way I wanna talk about is the import database. With the import database, we need to have a backpack created. I've already created one of those, so we're gonna select import database. It's gonna take us to the screen here. We're gonna fill out our subscription, where the storage is that is con that contains our backpack. We're gonna set up our server. I'm setting up serverless there. We're gonna give it a database name. I'm gonna call it stack overflow 2010 underscore a backpack. We're gonna give it our collation and we're going to authenticate. With all that completed, we can then go ahead and we can select OK. With that OK, it is going to start the deployment of our database or start the import of that. Now we can check on the status of this import by going to our blade within our SQL Server underneath data management. And we can see here that the import is in progress. Well, that's gonna take a bit. So let's go over and look at another way we can do this. So we have this fail column. On the screen, you can see that I don't have the users table. I have all the other tables migrated through the SQL extension or the SQL migration extension through Azure Data Studio. We can get this column over there by moving our keys and using BCP. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do within this database is we're going to need to create our column master key and our column encryption key. Now I pulled the column master key and the column encryption key from my on-premise services. I scripted those out and I deployed them here already. You can see on the screen that I've already executed those. And if we open this up and we look at our column master keys and our column encryption keys, there they are our CMK Auto 1, and so on. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to create our table, right? We need a table to BCP our data into. So if we scroll down here on the screen, we're gonna look at the table we're creating, and you can see about me is going to be encrypted with column encryption key CEK Auto 1. Let's go ahead and run that. 
And that will complete successfully once that completes. Now on the screen, I'm showing alter user DBA Bulldog 2 with allow encrypted value notifications. Why do we need to enable that? Well, let's first run our BCP in here. And you're gonna see when I run the BCP in, it's gonna fail on that BC client ID column ID 13. Essentially what's happening is it's not allowing us to update the, co the column that we have encrypted about me. So eventually the BCP gets out of sync and it's gonna fail and not load those rows. Now, so let's go over now back to Azure Data Studio. Let's alter user DBA Bulldog 2 with allow encrypted value no notifications, modifications, sorry, and we'll set that to on. And we'll go ahead and we will run our BCP command again. Now note, I'm using file format there to easily identify the columns and the order that this data needs to be loaded into our table. And look at that, we copied in or we BCP'd in a little over 299,000 rows. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is we wanna uh, select from our users table. When I select that, booyah, look at that. Our about me column has been populated and it's got the hash values in there. However, we wanna validate that we've set up our keys correctly and that we can see the data decrypted or the decrypted values. So we're gonna go up here to change our connection. We're gonna go down to advanced here in Azure Data Studio and we're gonna scroll up a little bit here in underneath security for always encrypted, we're gonna select enabled. Once we select enabled, we're gonna select okay. Then we're going to connect. Now with that connection, let's see what happens when we select that top 1000. And what are we gonna see? Oh yeah, look at that. We are seeing our data decrypted in front of our eyes, indicating that we've set up our encryption keys correctly. But how can we look at this same data using SSMS? So let's go ahead to connect, connect to our database server, go to options over here. Then we're gonna to wanna to select that always encryption tab up there. We're gonna select the checkbox here, enable always encrypted column encryption. We're gonna go ahead and hit connect. We're gonna go down to our databases, our Stack Overflow 2010 AE. We're gonna select tables, right mouse click here on users, select top 1000. And look at that, we are seeing the, de the data decrypted in front of our eyes again. All right, back over here in our SQL Server, you can see that our import of our backpack has successfully completed. We're gonna connect once again here in Azure Data Studio, ensuring that our security is set to always encrypted. We're gonna go ahead and hit connect. Once we're connected, we can run our select top 1000 and look at that, Woo! we have successfully imported and can see our encrypted data in a readable format because the backpack has brought over our column master key and our column encryption key successfully. I usually do this with smaller databases, upwards to 50 gig. All right, so was having a great conversation with somebody about encryption of our columns, always encrypted. And they were like, can we do this? It's like in the past, I don't think we could. But we showed that data migration service can migrate most of our data, but we still need a couple options to move those tables that have column level encryption enabled with always encrypted. Hey, this was a fun one, folks. You know where we like to keep this going. In the comments down below, let us know what you think about Always Encrypted. Let us know how the different ways that you move those larger tables over there. And as always, be good to each other. Make it set a goal you control and the steps you take them. I try to pick one thought, have some